Now, what is lean anyway? Let's go back to the beginning, to the history of lean. And if you understand this story that I'm about to tell you, you know, where lean came from and how it got started, you'll understand a lot about what lean is and why it's important and why it's been so successful, not just in manufacturing, but in healthcare and in other settings as well. Now, lean is Toyota production system. There's no question about that. I first got involved with lean. I, I had written a book called American Spirit, Visions of a New Corporate Culture many years ago. Um, it, I guess in the late 70s, uh, I wrote that. And Honda, when they started opening plants in the United States, the first plant manager, my book had been translated into Japanese, and the first plant manager bought my book in the Tokyo airport as it was about to fly to the United States and read it and said, aha, if this is what Americans believe, we can succeed. Now, actually, what I wrote in that book was not what Americans believe, but what I wish they believed. So maybe there was some translation problem. Um, but that got me involved at Honda, and I, I spent a number of years going up there and really learning from them, understanding their system. And they will tell you that their system is a variation of Toyota production system. Of course, they put their own flavor on it. But basically, it's Toyota production system. Now, wh where did it get started? Where it got started was in a Toyota plant. And Shigeo Shingo was the production manager, chief engineer, production engineer uh, at Toyota. And he observed the stamping press. Now, a stamping press, and that operation is very important in auto production because automobiles are basically bent metal, right? So what, what a, a stamping press does, it takes a, a flat sheet of sheet metal, and the press comes down and presses, well, what else would a press do? It presses the metal uh, into a shape. And there's a die at the bottom of the stamping press that is the image that's to be created. Now, it, it, the simple way to understand that is if you've ever uh, made uh, cookies with a cookie cutter, right? Your arm is basically a stamping press, and the die is the uh, cookie cutter, the, the different shapes. And um, you, you, you will, your arm isn't locked onto one shape. It can pick up and use different shapes. Well, a, a stamping press is exactly the same way. Now, Toyota will tell you that Toyota production system began when Henry Ford developed the assembly line and mass production. And they see the development of Toyota production system as a continuous flow, not as like one brilliant brainstorm, but as a gradual evolution to what it is today, and it continues to evolve. Very important to understand that. It's not a fixed thing. It's not one thing. If somebody visits a, a lean plant, they come back, they say, oh, I know what it is. It is this. Well, no, it's not, because it's not a note. It's a melody. It's an ongoing movement. It's a flow. It's a process. It's a learning and development process. You know, for a long time, Mr. Toyota, or Mr. Ono it was, did not want anybody to write down what the Toyota production system was, precisely because he feared that once somebody wrote it down, they said, you know, it's these five or ten things, people would stop thinking. And what Toyota production system is, is a thought process. So don't think it's some fixed thing. Now, back to the stamping press. That was a diversion, sorry. Um, Shigeo Shingo observed the stamping press. He had been to Ford Motor Company. And at Ford Motor Company, the workers who operated a stamping press did not change the die. There was a, you know, everything was specialized. There was a die change department. And die change workers, die change supervisor, die change department manager. And when you needed to change die, you called the die change department. And it typically took as long as 24 hours, a full day, to get the die changed on a stamping press. Now, if it's going to take you a day, think about the implications of this. If it's going to take a day to change the die, are you going to make 10 parts and then change the die? You're going to stamp 10 and say, change the die? Of course you're not. You need to stamp a whole lot. You need to you know, stamp a thousand or whatever the number is, but a, a lot. Now, if you stamp a thousand parts, where, what are you going to do with them? Where are they going to go? They can't just sit there. They're big, right? So you have to have a forklift. You know, they go on a pallet or something, and they, they have to have a forklift. You have to have the warehouse, goes into the warehouse. Then when they're needed, another forklift goes, gets them, brings them to the 
the assembly line where they get put on. There's a whole operation that results from stamping a thousand parts. Now what if you could all, now what if you could change die in a minute rather than a day? Would you have to stamp a thousand parts? No, maybe you'd stamp 50. I don't know, but some much shorter number, which means you wouldn't need the warehouse. You wouldn't need the forklifts, you wouldn't need the forklift operator, the, the warehouse supervisor, the warehouse department manager. Poof, all could go away. Last time I was in Marysville, Ohio, at Honda, they have what they said was the world's largest stamping press. And there was a, a flip chart next to the stamping press, and on it it had 0.54. You know what point fifty four was? Fifty four seconds to change dies on the world's largest stamping press, and the team that operates the press changes the die, and that was their game, that was their score to beat the record of fifty four seconds to change dies on the world's largest stamping press. How do you get from a day to fifty four seconds? And you might think, wow, this must be completely new technology. It must be a really brilliant engineer who did that. Uh -uh. It happened through continuous improvement. Gradual experimentation, trying things, seeing what worked. Shingo observed the stamping press, and he, with a stopwatch, measured the exact number of seconds it took to actually stamp out a part. That's a few seconds, right? I mean, that, that's, I mean, if you have a cookie cutter, how long does it take to stamp the dough to cut out that shape? Almost no time at all, very little time. He called everything else around that. And, and you know, the workers were working hard. I mean, they, didn't, they weren't standing around chewing gum or something. They were working hard, um, moving things and in and adjusting things and lifting things up and lifting things out. And, you know, there's a lot of motion going on around the press. He considered everything except the number of seconds it took to stamp the part he considered waste. Now this is a very disciplined, rigid <laughs> definition of waste. Because the workers working on the press, they didn't think that was waste. They thought everything they were doing was productive and they were working hard. And in fact, so did the managers. But Shingo, considering everything else non-value adding, rather than the value adding stamping of the press, he asked them to think about how they could eliminate some of that non-value adding work. And asking them to think about that and take responsibility for that, these are all lean principles, by the way, just think about them. Asking the team to take responsibility and think and experiment. And they tried things. They tried, you know, a, a platform that lifted, was spring-loaded and lifted the metal up so they didn't have to bend down and lift it up and put it in. They experimented with rollers that rolled in the dies, in and out, very quickly. They experimented with a lot of things. And no doubt, many of the experiments didn't work. But that's okay. That's how progress is made. Progress is made by experimenting and saying, you know, it's okay if things don't work. Try something else. That process went on for years. And through years of experimentation, it got to that 54 seconds that you now, I last saw uh, at Honda. I have no idea what it is now. I'm sure they beat it, but it's a good example nonetheless. So all of the lean principles of just in time, you know, eliminating waste, teamwork, studying the process, experimentation, using the scientific method, looking at the data. Those are all lean principles that we'll, we'll talk more about. But you can see them right there at the origin of the Toyota production system. And if you think about that example, and you think about all the surrounding implications of it, you think about the definition of the job of the workers, you think about what a supervisor or manager actually does and how they interact with their employees. You think about the physical workspace, the technical system, as well as the social system. You think about the innovation in the technical system in terms of rollers and spring-loaded platforms that come up and so forth. You know, all the technical and the social stuff is right there in that example. So that's the beginning. And since then, virtually every manufacturing plant in the world now either has or is implementing lean manufacturing. I've done a lot of work in healthcare, 
most healthcare or a lot of healthcare organizations now are implementing lean in healthcare. And I can give you lots of examples from both either healthcare or manufacturing or other types of organizations where taking the principles, they've been able to make great gains in productivity and quality and the quality of work life in the organization. So that's just a little history. Let's go on and talk about the key principles and 